In continuing our discussion on securing Secure Shell, let's talk about a few things you can do configuration-wise to make sure it's configured securely. Now, as we said, SSH is a secure protocol, but if you don't configure it correctly, you can open yourself up to malicious users and hackers and so forth. Now, there's several good ways to secure your SSH installation, and most of them involve editing the configuration files for the server or client the sshd underscore config file for the server or ssh underscore config for the client side. Now in order to edit these files you simply edit them in a simple text editor as we've said before and you either need to comment out a line or, or uncomment a line rather um, by removing the hash um, mark or commenting a line by adding a hash mark or you need to add a line to the file if it does not exist. So it's actually very easy to do. Now let's talk about the server side first we'll be editing the sshd underscore config. First of all, one of the things you may want to do is change the default port from 22 to a more obscure port. For example, you may want to change it to 5678 or 9110, whatever. All you'd have to do is go to where that port line is and uncomment it out and change the port to whatever you like. Okay, by default, it's going to be port 22. Now granted, this is security through obscurity. A simple network scan will probably find SSH on the port you changed it to, but it is at least one added layer of security. Another thing you can do is disable protocol version 1. That's actually a very important thing. Uh, SSH can use two versions of its protocol, version 1 and version 2. Version 1 has been shown over time to be insecure. So what you want to do is disable the support for protocol version 1 by changing that line in the config file. Another thing you may want to do is disallow root from logging in remotely over SSH and that's easy to do. You simply find a line that says permit root login and you change that entry to no. Yet another thing you can do is limit the login retries. All you have to do is set the max auth retries to whatever number you desire. By default I think it's set at 6 depending upon the SSH installation you have. You can set it to a lower number such as 3 or 2. You may even, if you like in your environment, set it to a higher number. That's up to you. Usually the lower number is more secure but the higher number is probably more functional and basically this allows someone to try over and over again to log in SSH. Now Another thing you can do is specify which users are allowed to log in via SSH. You may not want every user on the box to be able to do this, only select users. So what you would do is go into the config file and set the allow users entry to only those user accounts allowed. All you'd have to do is, is in the allow users entry, you just put the names of the user accounts that you'd want to use SSH. Now most of these changes you need to affect by restarting or executing the service sshd restart command from the command prompt as a root level user. Now on the client side, there's a couple things you can do as well, but one of the things you want to do, if you've changed the port number on the server side, then you may want to change the port number on the client side. Um, if you access different secure shell servers and they use different ports, you may not want to do this, but in that case you can change the port number dynamically at the command prompt when you connect to the computer each time by using a dash P in there and specifying the port number as we have in the example here. If you want to make this permanent because you connect to the same secure shell server over and over and it's the same obscure port number every time then you can edit the SSH underscore config file and change the port entry to a new port. So that's very easy to do. Now another thing you may want to do uh, for your overall SSH strategy is use public key authentication whenever possible. And We've talked about how to generate keys, public and private keys, for use through SSH uh, whenever uh, you uh, would like to do that. Let's take a quick look at the secure shell daemon configuration file and so we can point out some of the areas that we talked about where you can uh, change those security configuration settings. We're in computer A and uh, first I want to take a look at the GUI configuration for the secure shell daemon and that might help you give you a better idea of where you can look for some of these configuration settings. Now here we can change or add the, a different port like we discussed earlier. There's some other options we have down here allow TCP forwarding uh, which we'll talk about in a different session, uh, X11 forwarding and compression. Now up here we can change certain security settings such as login settings. 
here's where we can disable the root login if we like. We can just get rid of that so that root can't log in. That has the same effect of changing the entry in the config file. Permit root login to no. Now we can also change the maximum authentication retries here. Uh, we can set that line in the config file or we can change it here if we like. We can require password authentication, RSA authentication, or public key authentication here as well. And there's some other settings here that you may want to look at as well. Here's where we can change the secure shell protocol versions. 2 and 1, 2 only or 1 only. And I would recommend that you go with 2 only simply because, as we said, 1 is has been proven to be an insecure protocol over time. We can also change our ciphers that are used down here. And unless you really know what you're doing, I wouldn't mess with this too much. Let's go ahead and click Finish. It's going to write to the service. Uh, if you don't want to do this the graphical way, if you want to do it the uh, through the command prompt, all we have to do is go look at the shd underscore config file. And we're going to get different options here. And as I said, some things are commented out by the hash mark. And if you want to uncomment them out, you simply remove the hash mark. Okay, and we can go down here and look at some of these things. We've already seen some of these. Max auth retries 6. We can change that number to whatever we like to lower the maximum retries. Permit root login, yes. We can change that to no to restrict that. Public key authentication, yes. So those are some of the places that we can change some of this. And there's various options you can change in this entire file. Uh, some of them security related, some of them not security related. And over time, you're probably going to want to get in here and learn what all these different things do. Uh, permit empty passwords is another one that you might want to make a change to. You, you don't want to allow empty passwords. So if you uncomment this out, then that would be restricted and no empty passwords would be allowed. That's kind of uh, how you would change some of the security settings and securely configure Secure Shell better than it may be by default or to suit your needs. You can do that through the GUI or through the command line editing the file. And that's really all there is to it.